But this series, the purpose of this series is to um, find out what is the purpose of the local church. What is its purpose? The, the, the goal is to define at the most basic level what the church is supposed to be and declare what it is not. Okay? Let's take off the lenses that we have put on and let's look at it real. Let's just be real, huh? Yeah. We could with that? Yeah. Let's be real about who we, Hey, if we have a fault, let's change it. Yeah. Let's just not, you know, put band-aids over stuff and hide it. Let's 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 rip the band-aids off. And let's get some let's get some real surgery done here. And let's get healed. Yeah. Yeah. All right? Um, so let's be the church. The church is a place to serve. Now, that's that's one of the band-aids we don't like. The church is a place to serve. Not a place to sit and consume. Ugh. I know, I know, I know, I know. You're busy. I know. But the church, it was never meant to be, according to Scripture, was never meant to be a place of repose. It was meant to be a place to serve. Couldn't find a, uh, uh, a rhyming word there, so we're just going to go with that. Okay? A place to serve, to be connected. We're supposed to be, and, and each week we're going to talk about a different one of these, to be connected. And then, lastly, in this series, to live on mission for God's kingdom. There's not a whole lot in this series that talks about chilling out and not doing anything. But that's what we've been served up in our culture. You go to church, you do your penance, you, you know, by being at church on a cold day, you get extra. Okay? It's like we're still, it's like we're still selling indulgences to some degree. You put your work in, you get, you know, less years in purgatory. You know, we, we, think, we think that way because that's what the, the paganization of the church is very much alive and well in America. And let's strip it out. What, we are the church, and what are we supposed to look like? When we look in the mirror, are we a good representation of what the church is, or are we covered in a lot of garbage? That's what the series is about. So let's jump into today, and I want you to turn to, uh, it'll be on the wall too, but 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now this is a classic passage about uh, about church. But I want you to uh, look at it again with some fresh eyes based on what we talked about. Okay? And then we're going to go to the Old Testament. And I want to, I've been studying this particular prophet in the last week or so, uh, more than that actually. But, um, and I want to read you a section of, of, of a minor prophet. Actually, it's funny, Leslie talked about it yesterday. I was like, wow, that is so cool. We had our prayer meeting yesterday, and I was like, well, we're going to be talking about that tomorrow. And I haven't heard this prophet talked about in, like, years. But it was like, boom, boom. Pretty cool. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 starts this. For just as the body is one and many members, and all the members of the body, through, uh, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Okay, that's Paul's Dr. Seuss language for there's a lot of different parts of the body, but it's the same body. Right? For in one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. One spirit. There's not multiple spirits, one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it less part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would uh, not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body was an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body was, um, if the whole body was an eye, okay, if the whole body was an ear, where would the sense of sm uh, smell be? Okay, what he's trying to, to establish here is that we all have a very vital role to play in the church. Now, what happens when the eye takes a break. You can't, you know, 
you're a pirate. You start talking like that. You know, uh, if, if, if a member of the body takes a break and doesn't do its job, the, the whole body suffers. You see what I'm saying here? Now, I'm not saying that, you know, uh, we all have to be serving every Sunday, but I'm saying we have a responsibility to the body to do what God has made us to do. If we don't, then the whole body suffers. And you can't say, you know, because I'm not, you know, I'd rather be an eye, so I'm not an eye, so that means I'm not part of the body. That's not, that's, that's actually not biblical. It means whatever God has created you to be and created you to do, do it with all your might as unto the Lord so that, the, so that you are edified, God is glorified, and the church is strengthened. So that's what it means, okay? Let's keep going. Um, if the whole body were an eye, that would be weird. If the whole body was an ear, that would definitely be weird. But as it is, God arranged the members. Think of this, God arranged. Not, not, not Pastor Dave. Pastor Dave doesn't arrange. I facilitate. Seriously. We, we as, a, as a leadership team, the board... Uh, the core group leaders, we facilitate what God has already put in you. We can't put it into you. All we can do is try to mine out what God has already put there. All right? We facilitate. Um, but uh, But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. Keep going. Now, this is, uh, the, the, he changes uh, similar language here, but he changes the dynamic here. Ready? The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Listen, I, I, I'm a strong believer in this. That every single one of you, according to God's word, is needed. I was talking to Bill this morning. You walked in a little late. I'm sorry, Bill. I'm I'm, I'm calling you out here. And I had already been praying for this family here because I'm like, oh, man, they're not here again this week. I know last week was a tough week for you guys. And then he walked in. And I was like, yeah. The stones are here today. When you're not here, you're missed. And that's not a guilt, listen, that's not a guilt thing to try to fill the seats. I mean it. When you're not here, you're missed. Because the body is incomplete. And we need all, all the parts. We can't say that to one part, we don't need you. It's all necessary. There's, a sto- there's stories coming back from, uh, you know, soldiers coming back from, from the, from the uh, front that's, you know, who've lost limbs. And there's this thing called a phantom itch. You ever heard about this? They will have an itch in their foot that is no longer there. Their brain misses their foot. I'm not, I'm not, saying, that, I'm not saying that's true. That's true. Their brain is, is, wants that foot to be there. And that's kind of how I feel when, when somebody uh, is not here on a Sunday morning, man, you made my day, Bill, because I wanted to itch you. Yeah, I did a little bit. I came up again. Yeah, we're itching, yeah. On the contrary, verse 22. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And on our unpresentable parts, we are treated with greater modesty. Which are more presentable parts, do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the parts that lack it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the uh, same care, care, care for one another. So what is this saying? The members of the body that can't do as much need to be treated with more 
care. Not the other way. We tend to do this. Oh, well, that person can't invest as much into the ministry, so I'm going to give them less time or less attention. Just the opposite is true of Scripture. When there's somebody who's in need who cannot uh, be uh, feeding into the, the, the work of the body, who needs some care, we should be on that because they need it more. They need it more. Listen, I need it sometimes. I'm, I, I need it. I need it sometimes. I need some people to come around me and pray for me because sometimes I'm low. Sometimes I'm hurting. And sometimes I feel inadequate. And I need somebody to come and lift my hands up. I guarantee you do too. And that's where we should give the most time to, the most effort to, those who are the most in need of it. And that's not normal. That's countercultural. That's not, that's not normal. We usually, you know, we, we spend more time on those who we can get the most out of. Oh, shame on us, right? That's a, that's a, that's a tough one, and that's something we're going to do this year. Where am I? Now, there may be no division, okay? If one member suffers, all suffer together. Can everybody say amen? amen. That's what the church should be. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. We need to celebrate the wins and mourn the losses together. Because if the eye gets exalted, it's part of the body, so the whole body gets exalted. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Here's, remember I said earlier, we're the bride of Christ. We can either be a good bride or we can be a bad bride. It, it says, you are the body. You can either be good at it or you can be bad at it. There's no option. There's no, there's no plan B, C, E, D. We are the plan. We are the church. We are the body. We can either be good at it or we can be bad at it. Let's be good at it. We are the church. All right? As Paul explains in this passage, in the body of Christ, everyone has a role. And no role is too small. In an article by Consumer Reports, How America Consume, Consumers Shop, it says this, one in ten Americans say they could not give up their Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts habit even if that income uh, dropped, even if their income dropped dramatically in a failed economy. Yeah. If their income dropped, <laughs> if they lost their job, they would sell their kids before their Duncan. <laughs> we run on Duncan. Good marketing, right? <laughs> According to the same article, one survey found Americans hold tightest to at-home entertainment. When asked, what is the least thing you would, uh, what is the last thing you would cut back on in order to economize? 38% of people said that they'd never ditch paid television. 38. Including prime cable, satellite, and streaming services like Netflix and Hulu. Our consumer-driven mindset has blurred the lines of necessity and luxury. People in our country like to be able to spend on themselves. The common attitude is, my comfort is more, is my, uh, my comfort is my number one priority. Your comfort is my number, that's why I got these chairs in here. <laughs> Don't fall asleep. The same type of mentality can often creep into the church, too. Turn to Haggai. It's a book in the Bible. <laughs> Go to the New Testament and take a left. It's very close to the, the end of the Old Testament. 
Haggai. And just for a little background, the people of Israel have come back from uh, exile. They are underneath a remnant of the, of the Davidic covenant named Zerubbabel. And they're getting back to the land of Jerusalem, and they start to rebuild. And uh, Haggai nails them for their priorities. So here we go, right in chapter 1, verse 1. In the second year of Darius, the king of the sixth month and the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came, to the hand of, uh, came by the hand of Haggai, the prophet, to Zerubbabel, the son of uh, Sheltel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehovah, the high priest. Thus says the Lord of hosts, these people say, uh, the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet. Is it a time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses while the house of the Lord lies in ruins? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Isn't that what we're doing here? That's what this series is all about. Consider your ways. You have sown much and harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your full. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages is, uh, does so to put them into a bag with holes. He's saying this. You can work for yourself all you want. It will never bring fulfillment. It will never bring fulfillment what you want it to bring. Thus is the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the hills and bring wood and build the house that I might take pleasure in it and that I may be glorified, says the Lord. He says, stop working for yourselves. Consider working, putting your priorities and working for the Lord first. It's that same tithe concept. Consider Putting God first above yourself and see what happens. Here we go. You looked for much, and behold, it came to little. And when you brought it home, it blew away. I blew it away. That's interesting. I blew it away. Why, declares the Lord of hosts, because of my house that lies in ruins while each of you uh, busy yourselves with his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you have withheld the dew, and the earth has withheld its produce. And I have called for a drought in the land and, and on the hills, on grain and new wine, the oil, on what the ground brings forth, no man and beast, and no, uh, on man and beast, and on all who labor. Oh, he says, listen, your priorities are so out of whack. He says, consider that maybe you're putting your hopes, maybe you're putting your dreams in the wrong place. Materialism is not going to satisfy. In fact, it causes me to judge you because I am the reason, I am the thing that gives you joy. And when you don't put your hope and dreams in me, you're not going to find it. And I'm going to make sure you don't find it because I am where you need to be. I'm going to help you along the road to me. So if you're unsatisfied today, consider your ways. That's all I'm saying. Where are you putting your hopes? Where are you uh, putting? You know, I read a book uh, by David Platt a, a long time ago called Saving the Church from the American Dream. Ooh, that sounds like a Nazi thing or something, you know. It sounds like, you know, communism. Or, no, it's saying this. We, we live in a country where uh, we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we will take that, uh, that cry, that right, and we'll put it above Scripture. Well, that's not, you know, that's, we have that right. It doesn't mean we should indulge every moment of our lives into it. We live in a great country where you can pull yourself up. But if that becomes our God, it's wrong. 
we need to be, our priorities need to be put in the right place, okay? Here we go. Verse 12. Then Zerubbabel, the son of his father, and the high priest, with all the remnants of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord. Ha, listen to this. They obeyed the voice of the Lord, and what happened? Uh, their God. And the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had said to him, and the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the messenger of the Lord, spoke to the people with the Lord's message. I am with you, declares the Lord. Oh, would that be said of New Life Church? I am with you. I want that to be true. I am with you, declares the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of his father, <laughs> governor of Judah, and the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnants of the people. Not just the leader, but everybody's spirit was stirred up. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, on the, 21st, uh, on the 24th day of the month, in the sixth month, in the second year of Darius the king. God spoke to them. And I, you know, I hope that this series is, is God speaking to us as a church. Consider your ways. If you're unsatisfied with the world you're living in right now, it may be because your priorities are placed in the wrong God. It's, 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 it's astounding that this same thing happens. What did, what did Solomon say? There's nothing new under the sun. The same thing that they were struggling back in Darius' day is the same thing we struggle with now. D.L. Moody said this. What makes a dead sea dead? Because it, it is at all the time receiving, never giving anything out. Why is it that many Christians are cold? Because they are all the time receiving and never giving out anything. I didn't say it. Dale Moody. Take it up with Dale Moody. So, what does that look like? I was talking to uh, Jake and Josh the other day, and um, one of the things that we, we were discussing, and one of the things that I was like, a little bit nervous about, but it's a good point. God has given you gifts and talents that may not be defined comfortably within the service areas that we have for this church. So let's make a new category. You're like, well, they don't have anything in that church that I can fit into. Well, let's make a category that fits you. Because we, because we, the Word of God said, God gave it to you. God gave it to you to be used for the body, right? So to keep you from using it causes us to hurt. So let's make a new category. And that's scary for a pastor because that's a logistical nightmare. <laughs> but I'm game. I'm good. Let's go there. If, 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 you know, and at the end of this month, you're going to have an opportunity to, to hear what the different uh, core group leaders' uh, reports are as to what um, is going on in our church, where there's different opportunities to serve, okay? And you're going to have an opportunity that very day to put your day, name down as to wanting to be a part of a different one of the service teams. If you find out after listening to their reports that, that none of these service teams fit you, then come talk to me. And let's find out what God has put in you. And let's, 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 make, let's make it work. You know what, I love, know, know what I love about the way church often runs? Is, pastor, 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 we need this. Our church needs this. This is very important. Okay, great. You want to lead it up? No. No, 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 no. What do you mean? I thought we needed it. We need it, and you need to run it. <laughs> That's not going to happen here. I made it very clear to the prayer group yesterday that this pastor, in 2018, my goal is to step back a little bit. No. Who's going to do it? You. 
us. We're going to be facilitators of the move of God. Because God has not just blessed the vocational ministers to do the work. That's not biblical church. That's church that we have crafted in our time, uh, 2,000 years of time. And it's ineffectual. And it's why we are limping along in the West as far as church is concerned. We are the church. And the church is a place to serve. One another and the world around us. I've, been t- I've talked in the last year, I've talked to uh, multiple people. I've talked to Tree. Where's Tree? I've talked to Tree about needing a, 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 a set ministry to help with care of people who are struggling in our body. You know, she's like, Pastor, you can't, go to, you, you, you can't be going everywhere and doing all this stuff. And, she, and, and she's like, that's my passion. I would love to do that. Well, let's do it. I haven't forgotten, Tree, don't worry. It's been a big year. <laughs> love you. See what I'm saying? So what other things? My goal is at 2000, oh man, 2019, 2019, oh my gosh. That's like one year away from a 2-0. I'm old. At 2019, that this church will look significantly different than it does right now. I don't know that you're going to hear that from many pulpits. Let me just say that, because that to me is a very scary thought, because it takes my hands off the wheel a little bit. But I'd love to see what God would make this church to be, right? Would you like to see that? you like to see that? I would like to see that, even though it scares me. But I know that God's ways are better than my ways. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Hey, no. <laughs> so here's the thing. At the end of the month, I would like you to, to, to as, we, as we highlight some of these, these ministries, I'd like you to really take a close look at them and see if there's a place where you can serve. And if there's not a place that you can serve within the framework of those uh, service opportunities, please come see us. And let's find out what God is sparking in you. And see if we can do something to make your ministry a reality. And let's be the church. Because there's really no alternative. Because we are the church. You got me? You with me? Let's pray. Stand up.